So recently I traded my GFX 50S with two lenses for the Leica SL with five lenses. One of those lenses is the 28 millimeter Biagon F2.8 by Zeiss. The build quality of this lens is absolutely insane. It's built so well and I really enjoy the tactility of it. As you can hear, it's built well. The focus tab on it is something that people complain about, but for me, it's really easy to use and it doesn't bother me at all. Short focus throw, which is good for me to focus quickly, especially with focus peaking. And it's really nice to have this really big, bright viewfinder on the Leica SL. This lens has 10 aperture blades, which gives you some really nice bokeh in the background when you do get the bokeh. At 2.8, it's a little difficult and you have to be a little bit closer to your subject. And I'm sure you're wondering, why would you get a 2.8 lens? Whenever you're shooting documentary style anything, it's really nice to show the story and kind of give a little bit more back end on what's going on around you. And whenever you start at 2.8 and you can only go further, it allows you to show more of the foreground and more of the background and really frame your subjects up nicely. And I really shoot on a lot of fast glass. So having something that limited me to shooting stuff that actually doesn't blow the background completely out has been really nice. Although I do shoot a lot stop down, it's nice to be limited to 2.8 because the background isn't gone. Isolating a subject can be very understandable and there's lenses for that. And this is not really one of them unless you're in particular situations that just may work. This 28 millimeter compared to a 24 millimeter is absolutely insane. They are nowhere close to being the same at all. Obviously this is a fully manual lens and it doesn't have as many components in it as this gigantic lens does compared to this guy. And it just goes to show you that lightweight and small can still pack a really good punch. And that's kind of what I look for in a lot of my lenses. That's why I like the 18 millimeter 1.4 on the Fuji films so much. All of their lenses are just pretty small. But for this, for the most part, it's more about environmental photos, which I do quite often. The characteristics of this lens are kind of lacking other than the fact that it does vignette a little bit and there's not very much flare at all. So that's controlled super well. So if you're looking for something with a lot of character, this is not the lens you are looking for. But if you're looking for something that will push you to the boundaries of which you need to document something a bit better with, I believe this is a great lens. It is an M mount lens and I have it converted to the SL L mount lens. We recently shot an elopement in New York City and it was incredible. They gave me 100% creative freedom, which is something that I need. And after this trip, I have a bit of a spark in me, thanks to the couple that allowed me to be so free with my creativity. This lens helped tremendously with that. And I shot it completely on this camera and this lens, and they are not mad about it in the least. The funny story is, as the guy that hired me to photograph their wedding, picked up a Leica Q about seven years ago from one of my videos and he's been following me ever since. So that's a really big deal for me that he came all the way from Germany, flew us out to photograph their elopement and they are thrilled with the images that they received. We drudged through New York City and her dress was completely destroyed by the end of it. People were stopping us on the roads telling her that her dress was disgusting or dirty and everything and she was just delightful and did not have a care in the world. And that's what they wanted. And as you're looking at these images, you can tell that she is just free of concern and worry, which is really nice. And just being in New York City, photographing them was an experience in its own. I shot most of the images between 2.8 and F8. I wanted to get a lot of foreground and background elements in focus to show the story of them eloping and the people in the city and all of the little intricate details this lens helped me a lot with that and i really recommend getting a lens that starts at 2.8 so you and your photographic journey can stay away from shooting wide open so often which we all get caught up in for the most part we walk down through chinatown and of course it is just flooded with tons of people and really 
interesting vibes. It does feel like you're in Asia a bit over there. And I wish I could have spent a little more time there. And it's just awesome. The street photography there is just mint. You can't do any better than that. Uh, the people are unique and they don't care that you're there whatsoever. So I got some really good photographs there. And on the Brooklyn Bridge, um, it's just an easy place to do street photography. So if you ever get the chance to go to New York City, I highly recommend it. And if you get the chance to... Uh, rent one of these Zeiss bygone lenses. I would also recommend trying it out, uh, especially if you have an M mount or you have uh, an M mount adapter. I think that this is a really fun guy to use and try out. Um, it starts at $1,300, which is very pricey, especially for a 2.8 lens, uh, but you can get them used for around 700, 800 bucks. Um, so if you ever get a little extra change in your pocket, try one out. I would rent it from Lens Rentals. Uh, and no, I'm not being paid to say that. They're actually here in Nashville. And it's just very convenient for me to go pick up a lens there. Conclusion, I would say, is tack sharp, uh, minimal vignetting, and a 2.8 aperture is really nice. With 10 blades, uh, it gives you some really nice bokeh, especially when you're close to a subject. Um, and it also makes you approach your photography a bit differently and it kind of pushes you to be a bit more creative than just shooting wide open sticking somebody out in a field somewhere and photographing them which we all have done before and that's okay but just remember your lens does stop down for a reason if you're wondering how i edit all these photos i actually use my utah presets for these you can find them linked below and that helps support me and the channel and helps me continue to make these little videos I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, peace.